Welcome back, my friends. Perry once more here to talk to you about the cloud. I think a lot of you probably have heard about the cloud. I think there's actually kind of a lot of jokes floating around about what the cloud is. Well, today we're going to clarify the cloud. We're going to help you understand it more effectively because the reality is it's all moving to the cloud. It's a huge trend right now in information technology. And if you're considering a career in information technology, you should really understand the cloud, know the fundamentals, get the concepts, and be prepared to really look at it as part of your future IT career. So cloud computing uses all the same components of information technology, encompasses a variety of those computing concepts. But what it does is instead of having a whole lot of servers in a data center that's owned by a company. Basically, you have private folks like Microsoft or Amazon Web Services that are hosting all that computing themselves and then offering up a bunch of services that can be used um, that are paid for probably like on a per use basis, either like per head, per employee, or by a data usage. There's a lot of different ways. But the real difference here, the, there's no great mystery to the cloud. Basically, instead of having all those computers and all those servers and all those databases hosted internally at a company, basically they're hosted privately by these different organizations like Microsoft and Amazon, and they're selling all that processing power as a service. Fairly new concept, only been around for a few years, but deeply attractive to large companies because they save a whole lot of money. And also they have predictive costs. The thing about information technology, it's super expensive. IT costs money when you think about all the servers you have to buy, all the power you have to pay for for a data center to power those servers, all the air conditioning to keep a place cool where all the servers live, the data center, you gotta keep it cool. Because here's the thing, servers put off a ton of heat and if it's not cool, then they're all gonna shut down, they're all gonna fry. So you've gotta have all these different high dollar things that you have to maintain, such as power, air conditioning, not to mention rent on data center space. And it, it's really tough. And it's also tough to know how you're going to scale. Let's say all of a sudden that you hire a thousand new employees or you buy a new company. Predictive costs are really tough in information technology. Suddenly the cloud removes any mystery of that. The cloud says, hey, don't worry about building these data centers. Don't worry about hosting all those servers or having all that air conditioning costs. We got you covered. What we're going to do is we're going to give you all these services. I don't know, like email, like whatever the case may be. It's all going to be predictive on a predictive monthly cost based on user or storage, something along those lines. So it's super attractive, but the cloud, there's no great mystery. It's just that folks are doing all that heavy lifting with hosting the servers and giving it to companies rather than companies doing that hosting themselves. So there's really three common models for cloud right now. There's infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service. These are the three most common cloud offerings available today. I'm sure there'll be new ones coming in the future, but as it stands now, these are the three ones that you'll see the most. So infrastructure as a service. When you store your documents on box.com or Google, um, when you hire servers on Amazon, Amazon Web Services. So very common scenario. Let's say that you need to spin up a new intranet and you want to host that intranet in the cloud and you need a whole lot of things to do that. You need, so let's say, five servers running Windows Server 2012 and you need three databases running SQL Server 2012 R2 and there's a few other odds and ends you need. Now, normally, if you're gonna build that out, you could do that in your own data center, but what would that mean? You'd have to go out and buy the servers and get them installed, and you'd have to have enough power to, to run those servers, and you'd have to run bandwidth, and more and more and more of things that you would have to worry about. With infrastructure as a service, you can go out to someone like Microsoft Azure or Amazon Web Services, and literally, through a web browser, spin up all those servers in a virtualized environment. And in the server section, we talked about virtualization, basically virtualizations where they're able to put multiple instances of a server onto one physical machine. So folks like Microsoft Azure, Amazon Web Services, they take care of all that. And they basically say, okay, here's the deal. You got five, six, seven, eight servers, and you have this much storage, and you got this much bandwidth, we're gonna charge you a fixed cost of X per month. 
And I guarantee you, it's gonna be a lot cheaper than if you had to go out and buy all that hardware and host it yourself. Really very attractive to look at infrastructure as a service, especially for large companies. Some large companies have as many as five, 10,000 servers running. Suddenly they're able to do away with all those hard costs by leveraging infrastructure as a service. Next, we got platform as a service. So a platform is something that where you would normally go and buy things from it. So think about video game platforms, very popular. So when you go out there and you purchase all those crazy add-ons to Candy Crush or World of Warcraft or whatever your thing is, that's their platform. Candy Crush has this great video game platform where lots of people get in there and they do multiplayer gaming and they buy all this stuff. They're serving up a platform. And basically a platform is a fancy way of saying it's just their core software technology that they're providing to a large audience that gets to participate as a group. So there's a lot of different platforms as a service. The video game market is really big for that. So you see a lot of folks, but platform as a service tend to be very specific. So maybe you have a financial service company that's a platform as a service, or you have, again, the video games. It's really where you have a lot of people exchanging components and buying things within a marketplace and participating at a communal level is a platform as a service. Okay, software as a service. This is probably the most popular cloud offering to date, especially from a consumer perspective, but also definitely at a company level. So think about Microsoft Office. Microsoft sells literally billions of dollars of copies of Microsoft Office every year. But here is the trick. Lots of people are pirating them. So they had this great idea. They're like, well, wait a minute. What if we really reduce the cost of it? And we started charging by the month. And we kind of made it difficult for the whole pirating thing. So all of a sudden, instead of actually going out and buying a box copy with a CD in it with the key from Office Depot or wherever you bought it from, you go online, you download it, and hey, guess what? We're gonna charge you seven, eight, nine bucks a month for it. Same with Adobe Photoshop or Adobe Creative Suite. Lots and lots of pirating going on in that world. All of a sudden, Adobe's like, hey, don't worry your pretty little head. We know that we're 1200 bucks to buy our whole suite. That's super expensive. No big deal. We're gonna charge you 40 bucks a month for all you can eat. You can use all our software for $40 a month. That software is a service. QuickBooks, Yammer, I guess even Facebook would be software as a service. It's where someone has a software offering that you get access to and you pay them a monthly charge every month. It's, you're servicing that software. And that's really becoming the trend right now. Companies are really moving away from charging big, uh, you know, thousand dollar price tags for software and saying, don't worry your pretty little head, just sign this contract or go month to month. And hey, guess what? We have a mechanism that if you stop paying, you stop getting use the software. And they've gotten really good at that now. Because what's changed is in the past, the internet wasn't a constant. So there really wasn't an option to do this sort of model. But now everyone, I should say everyone, about 3 billion of us have access to the internet. So companies like Microsoft and Adobe are suddenly able to implement these software as a service models. On one, when, on one side, it's really good for the consumer because they get to spread the cost out. Normally in the old days, you'd buy a copy of say Adobe Photoshop and it would get updated about every 18 months and you'd get a reduced cost on that update. But that meant that you had to eat the bulk of that cost up front, whether, whatever it was, $1,000. Now you get to spread it out over the duration of, let's call it th three years before you would have actually paid off that initial cost. So the companies win because it really reduces piracy the consumer wins because they don't have to pay huge dollar amounts up front. And at the same time, let's say they don't use it. Maybe they only need Adobe Photoshop for three months. They pay for those three months and they're done and they move on. So software as a service really becoming the predominant way that companies around the globe are selling software. Very, very popular. Okay, so corporate network versus cloud. So today, let's say that you wanna get access to your email server and your email server is not in the cloud and it's hosted at your corporate environment. What you would do, generally speaking, is you would go on your laptop and you would connect through your VPN and you pop through your firewall and you get into your corporate network and eventually you get routed to your email and you would download your email to your Outlook or whatever you're using physical client. 
Very standard model, still very popular. However, if you had a cloud offering, then the individual simply would go through their browser the internet to get access to anything they need. They could get access to um, their file storage, their email, um, their office apps, whatever it is in the cloud. Instead of having to go and securely connect to a network through a VPN or whatever means the company likes to use, you go through a browser and you're able to connect to those resources directly. And those resources are served up in a browser. So really good rule of thumb, if you're getting access to a specific tool, and especially if it's more consumer driven, but if you're accessing through a tool via a browser, there is a very high likelihood that that tool that you're accessing is in the cloud. The whole web browser component is what's made cloud computing very popular and very accessible. So things like your Outlook, like think about Google Gmail, that's definitely in the cloud. Um, think about Google Docs, that's definitely in the cloud. Office 365 sites in the cloud. Um, Intuit QuickBooks in the cloud. So if you're getting access to it from a browser, there's a very high likelihood that you're hitting it in the cloud. So core benefits, again, of being in the cloud. Cost savings, big one. It's really, really very cost effective to scale up. Now, some might argue that over time, you know, the cloud is gonna add up, you know, especially if you have like 50,000 employees like some large companies do, and it might be cheaper to have physical hardware and lot licensed software. But for a lot of companies, especially in the like, let's call it 100 to 5,000 range, the cloud is definitely much more cost effective because you don't have to pay for data centers, servers, and more importantly, you don't have to pay for resources to administer all those components as well. So it's a big cost savings. Elasticity, the cloud is flexible. You can scale up or down as you need, and it's scalable. So let's say from a performance perspective, you sell retail. Well, you can have a cloud environment and add more to it around the holidays. And it, you just have that level of flexible because you can scale up and dynamically adjust for load bursts. You know, if we look at retail organizations, they do 70% of their processing online e-commerce during the holidays between basically Thanksgiving to the first of the year. That's when they're doing the bulk of their work. So the cloud gives you ability to scale up rapidly without having to go out there and buy a ton of servers. Also storage on demand. You may not need tons of storage or suddenly maybe you get hit. Maybe there's a merger or an acquisition and suddenly you need three times as much storage you had. Well, storage isn't necessarily expensive anymore, but it does take a while to get it set up in a physical network. With the cloud, you can simply just go out, buy more storage, and bam, it's immediately available. So from business benefits, more flexible, easy to get into business. If you're like trying to do a startup company, you don't wanna mess with a bunch of servers. You just wanna go out there and provision your email, provision your intranet, provision your website. And again, all that can be done in the cloud. You could go up today and literally have your, a business set up over a weekend because of the cloud. Mergers and acquisitions, it's so much easier now. If you have a company that's maybe physically located one place and they have all these employees and they're having trouble communicating with a new company that's either purchased or been purchased, you can set up cloud sites and immediately grant access to folks without a bunch of IT drama. Ability to duplicate or adopt successful business processes. This is a huge one. So now with companies like Amazon through AWS or Azure, whole business processes that are done within IT can be duplicated. So let's say that you have a company that you acquired or you're working with a partner and they do really well at one specific thing and they have all these systems to make that happen. When it's in the cloud, it's virtualized. So you can say, you know what? I want that business process. And bam, you can spin up a new virtual environment in the cloud with those business processes and immediately start taking advantage of them instead of having to like create it from scratch and try to copy it manually. And that is becoming a huge trend in terms of business process optimization. And really, it allows IT leadership to focus on the business rather than maintenance. I can't stress how important this is. Having been in IT leadership for a lot of years, so much of back what you ha used to have to deal with was, okay, are the servers up? How is performance? Um, I see here we need to upgrade RAM in this environment. We gotta patch these servers. Super time consuming and frankly, kind of lame. Very boring, not exciting. What real IT leaders want to do is they're like, 
how am I going to leverage technology to make this company more profitable? How am I going to grow this organization? And that's what you can do with the cloud. You can say, oh, okay, this is just a commodity. We're going to spin up these web servers. We've got this internet. We've got email, whatever it is. Let's focus on how we're going to make some money. And then really optimizing the communication of business process. Business needs to be about its process. What's its core offering? What do the teammates in IT do to help drive profitability and productivity in the organization? Now that they don't have to worry about the, the nuts and bolts of keeping all the lights on in IT, they can really focus on things like profitability, productivity, and business process. All right, so to recap, the three most common cloud offerings are infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service. And probably the best thing is you can just get at them. You can spin them up quickly, you can get to them through a browser, and you can set up a whole organization rapidly without having to deal with all the overhead that traditionally a few years ago you had to deal with. All right, my friends, thanks so much. Stick with us. We got another great program coming your way.